Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Anthony and today we are going to continue our fun with the Gmail API quick start in PHP. And what we did in the last few episodes, we put all this code together and do our website and effectively are reading the labels out of our website and displaying that to the screen. In the last video, we did it without using the command line because this code requires you to use the command line, and that's not really how it should be if you're going to make this production, obviously. So, uh, But it's definitely a good starting point. So we've gotten rid of the command line references, and today what we're going to do is we are going to clean up the code a little bit so that we've got, uh, we're actually using the return statements that we're calling. So right now, if you take a look at how this is organized. If you haven't watched her videos before, we've got our index.php file, our Gmail, and our connection. And each of these has its own function that relates to the name of the file. And so index is the starting point. Now, yo yo is the name of my class. It really has no reason for being called that. I just called it that because I was on my mind. And what we do is once I go to the page, this, this is run. This code is run right here. So what it does is it creates an instance of the yo yo class, which is this. And then it will go down and it will echo out to the screen and then call go. So what that means, if you're not familiar with how return, statement or return statements work, this is where it kind of comes into play. So if I'm going to echo something out and then call a method, that method needs to return something for it to echo out. So this method in here says go is actually here, go. And let's take a look at what it's returning. Well, right now it's got two potential returns. The first is if you are connected to your Gmail account. So if my website successfully linked to my Gmail account, then I would expect to be able to call a labels, read labels method here and have that read labels return something to the go function. And then the go function will return it to the calling line of code right here. So right now, this is good. I've got echo, go, so there's a return statement coming back to here. But again, I've got a return statement and I'm calling a method. If I'm going to return a call, then this call also has to have a return as well. So if you're not following me here, I, I can totally understand why. This can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're new at this. But bear with me. It'll hopefully make sense at the end or just rewind it and watch it again. But... The goal here is for each return statement to actually return something. So right now the go method will return either the read labels or the get unauthenticated data um, code, whatever is behind that, the scenes there. But let's find out what the Gmail read labels method is returning. So right now let's go into the Gmail file and find the read labels method, which is right here, and see what it's returning. Well, if you look, Right now, it's not returning anything at all. There is no return statement. So under index.php, this effectively is not, it's doing nothing right now. So we're just going to update that in this video, help you understand return statements a little bit better. And then in the next video, we're going to set you up for actually reading contents of an email rather than just the labels. And we're going to build off of this. So over in the gmail.php file, Let's just start making use of this code so that it will return something and then be pushed out to the screen. So right now we're saying print no labels found. Instead of saying print no labels found, let's create something called uh, the HTML. This is going to be a variable that I'm going to be able to stack whatever I want inside of it. And we're going to say the HTML equals, and we'll just make it blank for now. Now the concatenation uh, character or the way to concatenate strings in PHP is with the dot equals. Um, so we're going to do that now. So instead of saying print no labels found, we're going to say the underscore HTML dot equals. And that means I'm adding to the empty string whatever I type into this, into these quotes. So I'm going to say the same thing, no labels found. But since this is HTML, I'm going to say P, I'm going to put it in P tags. And this can be whatever you want it to be, obviously. Um, but I'm just going to do p tags, so begin p and end p right there. So now I've got the HTML dot equals no labels found. This is the end of my class right here. This is the end of my method. So right before the end of my method, I'm going to return, and this is where I, I'm talking about here. The, the return is important. It needs to actually return something. The HTML. 
All right, so now if we drop into this here, we're gonna say the HTML is going to equal that, and then we return that back to index right here, and then it will in turn return it again to here and then echo to the screen. So that is kind of how that works. So a lot of return statements may seem kind of redundant, but you'll find lots of programs are that way. They're modularized so that everything's separated. And no labels found is printed here. We don't really need that anymore. So we'll comment that out for now. We could just delete it, but we'll just comment it. Now, the same thing here for this line below. We're going to copy, and then right here we're saying print labels. Instead of saying print labels, we're going to say the HTML dot equals labels. And then we'll put semicolon at the end. So P is for paragraph. It's going to enter to a new line. So you'll see that once we compile this, uh, once we run it, I'm sorry, it's actually going to um, put it on new lines on here. So it'll look a little better. And then down here, we've got the same thing going on. We're saying print F. We're not going to use print F. All of this, remember, is from the, the default code that came with the quick start. And it was because you're using the command line. So it made sense to use this. Now it doesn't really make so much sense because we're using HTML. We're displaying it through the web browser. So we're going to say uh, labels or label get name. And we're going to put that right here. All right. And just for uh, organization, I'm going to do a quote. And then again, I'm concatenating. So I'm saying dot quote. And that is it, really. So let's save this, and we will move this file to our server. So the only thing that we're moving to our server right now is we're in Gmail 4. We're going to move the Gmail file over. And then I'm going to reload this screen, and you see now it's all on new lines. That is the difference between using return statements um, and having you know the P, the paragraph statement, separating each line, and uh, and not using the return statements. So these two lines here, or this third one, depending on which if you fall into, are going to populate this the HTML variable with whatever it pulls from your Gmail or nothing if there's nothing found, and then it will return that back to the index, and then the index will pick it up here and then return it and echo it to the screen. So that is how that is organized. Now, bear with me in the next video. Uh, like I said, this one's gonna be short, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start playing around in, uh, let's go to Google and we'll say, uh, we'll say Google, we'll say Gmail API classes. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna actually play around with uh, the Gmail API classes. So all of this stuff right here, this is a wealth of knowledge, and you can just play with any of these. You can pull out message parts, threads, labels, I mean, anything you want. So the next one we're actually going to do is we're going to read the contents of an email and display that to the screen. And so if you want to, if you're interested in that, then subscribe and comment and like, and that is all. All right, have a good day.